Hello, this is the first game that I'll be making as an example for the final project. Uh, this game is called Pig, and here's an example of my goal of where I'm going with this project. The game of Pig is a dice game. We're going to be rolling die. Two players are going to be playing, and it's a six-sided die. If you roll a two through a five, you're good. You can accumulate those points and keep taking another turn. But if you roll a 1, your turn is over, and all the points you've accumulated are gone. So as you roll, you want to roll and roll and roll, but then before you roll a 1, you want to be able to hold. So let's try that out. We are going to roll. I rolled a 6. I've got 6 points. I roll a 0. Oh, I just lost my 6 points. So player 2 rolls, gets a 4, rolls again gets a 2, so now they're up to 6, rolls again, rolls a 2 and gets an 8, and so they hold, and those points show up as points toward their total score. So, here we go. Oh, the first thing I rolled was a 0 for player 1, player 2's turn, they roll a 5, they roll another 5, and they roll a 3, that's 13 points. You hold, you add those together to get 21 points. So the first person to roll and get a total score of 100 points wins the game. And you can see it has elements of animation in there with the die. We have images, we have uh, inputs with rolling and holding with our buttons. This is going to require a number of objects in the background to keep track of the state and we're going to have to make a GUI and stitch it all together. So let's start that process. So what we would do is go and make a new project here in IntelliJ. And we're going to do just the standard making a new project. Next, let's go ahead and call it uh, Pig Dice Game. And here is our new project ready to go. So we start off our projects again with really nothing inside there. We need to start making some packages. So let me help put things to together. We have pig inside that package. Well, I'm going to need a GUI. I probably want to make another package which is my model. And to help organize things, I'm going to make another package. Uh, it's just a nice directory of where I'm going to put my resources. <clears throat> OK, so let's start programming up the model first. We want to have a Java class. We want to represent our <coughs> die that we're going to be rolling. So. Let's get everything else ready, too. We are going to have a player class. And we are going to have a uh, game class. So each one of these pieces, we will try to program up the model and then test it out. As I'm trying to develop the pieces to make this game work, I've got my game here, I need to make a die that I can roll and I can get numbers from. So that seems to be a nice element that I can model in a nice little sensible way. So let's go ahead and do that. Up at the top, I'm going to make my private data fields and that's going to have an integer for the number of sides that we can have and an integer for what is on top of the die. Those are my pieces of information. Well, up next comes the constructor. So I would say public die. Tell me the number of sides on the die. And tell me the top. And from those, I can make a die. This dot sides equals and this dot top equals top. 
Okay, so we have a die that we can make. Commonly, we want to have some get methods, and IntelliJ recommends a few of them. Return top. Okay, these are known as our accessor methods. Somebody wants these pieces of information, we can give it to them. There's also mutator methods that we would want to make here. Public void set top. Somebody might want to put the die at a certain spot. We notice that we could do that if we are starting a number. This is something that we want to do, but we don't want them to type in any number. We have some limits on what they can do here. So we would say like if the actual top given to me is greater than zero and top is less than or equal to sides, then I can make top equal to that value that came in. Oh, I didn't have a value come in. I'm gonna put it there. Okay, so somebody says set top to be this value. If that number is greater than zero and it's less than or equal to the number of sides we're allowed, then this is a valid thing to put on the top of the die. Okay, last thing we want to do with our die is sort of like gameplay methods. We are going to roll the die. Okay, so at this case, top is going to be equal to well, I need to talk to math.random here. And if I multiply math.random, which is a zero to one double times sides, that gives me a zero to sides double, but I cast it to an integer. That gives me, say if sides is six, I'm standard six sided die, this is now zero, one, two, three, four, or five. So I really want that to be one, two, three, four, five, or six. And now I have a die that I can roll. Okay. So does it work? You could build yourself another test piece and use JUnit and plug that together. Or we could just try to make some die. sides we're going to put a one on top and then system dot out dot print line d dot get top and d dot roll and then let's do our print again and we might get one again so let's let's really do this like four and i equals zero i less than ten Let's roll our die 10 times and just print them off. Okay, and we're gonna print off i plus colon here, just to give me some indication that things are working. Great, I've got an arrow. Let's try to run this to prove to myself that I have written a good die. Okay, so down here we can see I started off with a one at the top, and then I rolled it 10 times, and I was getting valid numbers. One, two, four, five. I didn't see three yet, but it's a random die. Okay, so this is how we can start making a small class and then testing it. I didn't write too much code without making sure that some of it was working. That's important to me as I start programming up this game. I don't want to write 200 lines of code <coughs> and then <coughs> not know if it works or not. So let's make a player class. Now the important things that a player needs to remember are how many points it currently is trying to get on its turn, how many points it has in total. So and it also, well, just to make it more general, let's give them a name. 
So our data fields again, private string name, private int return score, and a private int total score. Okay, so by making a player class, we can instantiate two of them and then be having the game talk to both of them and the player records and does what it needs to do at the different places. So, the only piece of information we need here is the name. All the other ones we know that they start off at zero. So, that's not saying equals name. Zero. Total score equals zero. Now, technically, we don't have to do those, but because they're default values for an integer, it's nice to remind ourselves that when we make a player, everything is done. Okay, so, oh, that's a constructor. Now let's make a few more methods down here. We want to access things, and so we might say, hey, public. Wait a second, public, it was like, oh, cool. I can make some of those methods for you. This is convenient. Say, hey, IntelliJ, can you make me a get total score method? Yes, I'll just write it for you. Can you make me a get turn score method? Yes, I'll do that for you. Okay, so those are just ways to tell somebody what's going on inside our object. Well, we don't want people to set things. The game has a certain structure of how it does that. So, we're going to write some gameplay methods down here. So when you roll a 1, your turn score goes away. When you bank it or hold it, your turn score goes away. So we want a way to just say, reset your turn score. So turn score equals 0 for that method. We want to be able to say, what does it mean to update your turn score? Well, somebody tells you some integer that was rolled, and you're going to update your turn score by it. You're incrementing your current turn score by the die that's currently there. And the last thing a player wants to be able to do is to save their score. So you take your total score and add in your turn score. And then don't forget, when you're told to save, you reset your turn score down to zero. You take those points from one spot to the other, and you're all ready. OK, again, let's make a simple way to test things. I am going to make a die here. Six, put a one on top of it, and then let's make a player. Mark. Okay, so currently the player has nothing inside, so we would want to test that out. Turn score plus p dot turn score. Total score. Total score. Okay. And that should be ooh, get total turn score and get total score. Yes, we've got to use our methods for testing them out. Great. Okay, so what would we be able to do? We want to be able to say, hey, player, I want you to increment and update your turn score. And I want to do it based on the die. Okay, to really make this work, we probably want to roll our die. We know that's working from before. And then let's do this a few times. I will 
less than, let's roll it 10 times, well, that's a lot, but plus plus. And each time we do it, let's print them out. Okay, and then when we're finally done, I want to say D, uh, not the D, player, save my score. And then let's tell me what it really looks like at the end. Okay. Saving. And then we'll do that. Okay. System dot out dot print line rolling. Okay. One more curly bracket, and we should be ready to go. This should test out all of those methods that we wrote getting things, updating the turn. Update turn, remember calls reset score. So if we run this, here's what I'm hoping to see. Great. So we started off with nothing. We rolled a three, got a nine, 15. We kept on adding them on, but our total score was zero all the way to the end. And then we said save. It takes the turn score, puts it to zero, but our total score becomes three. 33. Okay, so this is going to be working for us as a player, a good storage space to put our numbers and be able to have methods. We're starting to see how we're going to write the game is rolling, updating, rolling, updating. <clears throat> we need a little bit more back and forth about that. So let's work on the game and we're going to work on that in the next video.